when it comes to immunomodulation, I think we are all um, uh, agreeing on the fact that uh, immunomodulation is um, indispensable in a successful management of multiple myeloma. But of course, it's a very broad term. And basically, uh, the term comes from the preclinical evidence where we see that several compounds have a direct or indirect uh, influence on several parts of the immune system. So in the traditional way, when we talk about immunomodulation, then there are the immunomodulatory drugs or the imits, thalidomide, linalidomide, pomalidomide. And um, in addition to that, the naked or traditional monoclonal antibodies, uh, daratumumab, isatuximab, uh, elotuzumab. Um, but of course, we have entered now a new era. So there are the uh, cell mod drugs and uh, Cerebron E3 uh, ubiquitin ligase modulators. Um, and then there are the antibody drug conjugates like Belamav, um, the T cell engagers, and then last but not least, the, the CAR T cell. So it's um, uh, quite something. It's an area that's very rapidly evolving. And in my talk, um, I discussed the more traditional immunomodulation, let's say the imits um, and the monoclonal antibodies in newly diagnosed myeloma. And very interestingly, we see that um, the first line treatments become more and more stronger. And for the transplant eligible patients, we have come quite a long way. So uh, we are currently treating patients with triplets, combination of an imid, a proteasome inhibitor, and dexamethasone. And so we're now at a new era of using quadruplets. So the PI, imid, and dexamethasone in combination with a monoclonal antibody. And especially an anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody together with an imid, like lenalidomide and a proteasome inhibitor, being it bortezomib or carfilzomib. Those quadruplets uh, they're really amongst the best, the most effective treatments that one can give to a newly diagnosed patient with multiple myeloma. Because these uh, quadruplets uh, are highly effective in terms of response, in terms of depth of response, in terms of MRD negativity. Um, and in addition to that, they are uh, pretty well tolerated. So these uh, combinations can be given during many cycles. So also the duration of the induction will become longer or it will be split into two parts, let's say induction, then transplant, and then consolidation. For the non-transplant eligible patients, fortunately, um, there is also very favorable evolution uh, when it comes to a longer uh, time to progression. And this is also thanks to this combination. So, um, but one has to keep in mind that when we are talking about a typical elderly myeloma patient, um, these are patients that are not candidates for intensive treatment. And many of these patients have comorbidities, they are frail. And somehow the treatment needs to be adapted to the specific uh, situation of those patients. But also here a combination of an imit like lenalidomide with a proteasome inhibitor and dexamethasone. So the RVD regimen is highly effective. It can be given in its standard format or in a light version for the very elderly and frail patients. And then there is the combination of um, lenalidomide or a proteasome inhibitor like bortezomib with uh, an anti-CD38 like daratumumab, which is a, uh, like DRD is a very potent combination and uh, that can be given for prolonged duration. So when you compare the way we approach newly diagnosed younger and elderly patients, of course, there is a difference of the intensive part of transplantation, but for the rest, we see over the time more and more similarities. Uh, again, where you have really to tailor the treatment according to the patient and according to specific characteristics of the disease. And I consider this as a very good evolution where we 
are moving away from an approach like one size fits all, but that we have a basic platform and that we can modulate that platform according to the specific needs of patients.